Hello again and welcome to Ndu Dubai Fafa. Hello family. Yes, I've got the pillowy. Yes, of course. Crunchy. Mhm. I got a recipe for you today. Yes. Oh may I say kuse? Mhm. Just the way you buy your kuse from the sellers. This is it. Okay, so in a previous video which I'll leave a link in the description box and I'll also pin it at the top, I shared my two faster methods in peeling the beans. Yes. So if you can watch that, that would help you get to this point exactly where you have a bowl of beautiful peeled black eyed beans if you do like what you see so far and you haven't subscribed yet please do so and also activate your notifications to all yes that's so important because once you do that anytime i upload a video you're notified of it because sometimes you don't even realize that i've uploaded a video exactly i don't want you to miss anything because i have you in my mind when i'm creating these recipes yeah so now let's get started in making the pillowy crunchy akara kuzi recipe so yes i've got this and i'm going to add some onions and i'll be using banana shallots and also one habanero chili because i need it spicy but this habanero chili is actually quite hot you know here in london um you do get like habanero chili and others are like not that hot so they're just mild and others are very hot next thing is i'm going to be blending this but this is the first number one trick in blending okay so you notice that I'm just using a shot glass for this. So I'm just gradually adding water because the batter is so important. You don't want it too wet. You just need it so. So you will notice I just added the one shot and allowed the blender to blend at the lowest setting. Yes. And if you had any difficulty, then I'll add another shot. So in total, I added about two and a half shots of water to this mixture and I got the texture that I required. Do not worry, I'd leave the list of ingredients and measurements on my blog, fafagilberts.com, so you can check it out. And also, whilst you're there, please don't forget to subscribe so you're notified yet again of when I do upload a new recipe. So you're covered, really. Anyway, so I'm going to follow this until I can see there's an ease in the blend. Absolutely. Now, what I'm looking for is for a textured, smooth consistency. Yes, you don't want your batter to be too smooth because if it does, then you're going to lose that crunchiness. So I'll give you a closer look. This is the texture that you're looking for. It's almost grainy in itself. Yes, but it's like, it's just smooth. It's just so. So yes, just follow that process until you get this consistency. Now, the next trick exactly is you need your mixer you can use your hand mixer if you've got one or just your normal manual whisk that would take you a long time honestly because even with this mixer it took about 15 minutes yes for it to get to that consistency that i was looking for that sort of pillowy consistency it's almost like you're making what would i say um Oh, what's the best description for it? Souffle, yes. That's the kind of texture we're going for. So as you can tell, once the air is incorporated into this, the batter then becomes lighter, lighter and fluffier. At this point, I uh, still have about 10 minutes for it to go. And yet again, I'm blending this on that medium sort of strength. Yes, because if not, everything's just going to splash everywhere. So you can see it's doubling up in size. And at this point, I've got five more minutes because even though it's bubbly, I need it to be still like stiff. So I can see that it still has a little bit of that watery consistency. Absolutely, yes. But I need it to be pillowy. So that would go on for another five minutes whilst I then add some oil to my wok. This is the consistency I'm looking for. That is stick to the spoon. 
Yes. And when I turn it over, it just works like that. That is it. So that's the consistency you're looking for. You need it to pillow it to that point that it holds to your spoon. Now my oil is hot. It's been on that medium heat for about five minutes. And yes, I can now scoop a tablespoonful and a half of my akara or kosi butter to it. Now this is so aerated that it just floats on the surface, just like a swan. Yes. And we're going to maintain this heat, this temperature all the way through. Yes, it's important because if not, if it's cold, your akara will absorb all the oil and you don't want that. Ooh. And equally, you don't want it undercooked where on the outside it looks so beautiful and crunchy and they open and it's not. But then again, once you have that aerated consistency, it cooks quickly. That's a trick as well. So yeah, I was waiting. I was like, oh, I can see a little crust. I was excited at this point. So I've just been impatient and I've just been turning this around, as you can tell. But, you know, you can leave it for a little bit longer when, you know, you can see that the crust is forming and it's getting browner. Because the trick about it is you need it to go as brown as it can. Yes. So that it maintains that crunchy texture of akara. Look at that. This is not any other food. Oh, this is in to do by Fafa. So in total, I fried this for about five to six minutes. And as you can tell, I'm just constantly turning it for an even cook. You don't necessarily need to do that. But I guess I was like excited about this. And I was just watching it with every little step I was taking. The reason being, if I do not keep an eye on it and it doesn't work out, guess who has to eat it? Moi. Mm -hmm. With my sad face in the corner. <laughs> At that point, I guess you would not be hearing, this is not any other food. <laughs> this is a doo by Fafa. You won't be hearing that statement. Actually, you even be watching it in the first place. Now, you can also add some diced onions some spring onions, bell peppers, whichever color you prefer to it, to make a colorful akara or kose. I don't know if you can relate to this. I've got a few friends who do not like the chunks of onions. They want everything blended. Their tomato blended. Like, they just don't want to see anything. And you know me. Me, I like my chunky, crunchy onions. You know, that kind of thing. So, yes. Do you have any friends like that? Leave your comments below and share your experience and how you handle it. I mean, of course, I had to make sure that I blend everything so that you don't see it and that they can enjoy it as well. But, yes, here we have the second batch that is fried and I'm so excited about it. This is definitely a fill proof recipe. Now, if you do have any questions about the recipes, um, do leave it in the comment section as well below and be kind enough to share with one other person and invite them over to the channel as well. I will be grateful and appreciative of that. So now, have you got your Hawaza Koko ready? Now, don't worry, I've also got that recipe covered for you. I'll leave a link in the description box. Now, when I do mention Hawaza Koko, it's made out of millet and spices. The millet is fermented and then these beautiful warm spices are added to it. And that pairs really well with this. Absolutely delicious. In Dubai, Fafenia, Kuban Dudua, and Yukuilu, Fafa, come on, Green Dudu, and Fafa. I love the flavors of Ulu, Mabala, and Dudua Vivian. So delivering my sample boxes to some clients the next morning yes this is what even still looked like this is a day old akara can you believe that <laughs> anyway if you are definitely inspired to try this recipe yes please do so and also i'd love to hear your feedback i appreciate that a lot 
naturally i'd leave the list of ingredients and measurements on my blog fafagilbert.com you'd also find more traditional recipes on my other blog in dubaifafat.blogspot.com so do check it out yes i'm on facebook instagram twitter and snapchat as in dubaifafat so pass by and say hi noel thank you very much for my theme song and until my next video kings and queens guess what i love you for you so